We all need a build that's going to allow us to live, inflict as much damage as we can on our enemies, and basically control the battlefield. The build that I am going to show you today is just one of those builds. I know there's been quite a few changes with a lot of the subclasses and the mod system, so it's very confusing right now. You can't build, bring in the same builds that you did before. But with some very simple build crafting, I'm gonna try and show you tiers of this build that you can do very simply with just some very basic things that everyone should have. And then some more advanced versions of this build, you will be able to do anything in the game and just never die again. I used this build exclusively as I went through the, the Legendary Lightfall campaign and it was a lifesaver. It was honestly better than the Void builds I had last year on Hunter. So again, if you're looking for something that'll allow you to live and do endgame content, check this build out. So for this build, again, there are a lot of similarities to things that have been done in the past, but with some of the seasonal mods and things that are out, there's actually a ton of synergy in Void. And so for this, where last season I was doing a lot of Arc Hunter, this is going to be a Night Stalker Hunter build. So with this build, I'll be using Deadfall. Again, just because I'm not trying to do DPS with my super, I'm trying to uh, add control and trying to do uh, debuffs for my teammates where I need to. I'll be using Marksman's Dodge. So that's typically different than what I typically do. I usually use Gambler so I can get my Smoke Bomb back. In this mod build, I'm gonna go really hard in a Stylus Executioner, which I'll explain in a minute. And this will also allow me to reload my weapon. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing that. Personally, I'll be using Suppressor Grenade for a variety of reasons later in the build. That is not a mandatory thing in this build. You may wanna tweak things a little bit. So using other grenades are fine, but Suppressor is what I'll be using this. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna be using Stylus Executioner. So with this, that allows me, whenever I defeat a weakened, suppressed, or volatile target, to gain invisibility and true sight. Also, when performing a Stylus Executioner, my next melee attack, when invisible, will weaken targets. Again, this is not gonna be a key portion of my build, but it's a nice extra thing to have. One of the other things with using Stylus Executioner is I get additional fragments for the slots, which I'll talk about here in a second. Then I'm also gonna do Vanishing Step. Again, because I'll be using my dodge, when my Marksman's dodge, then because of that, because I'm not gonna get my smoke bomb as much, I'll be using my vanishing step to dodge to make myself invisible. From a fragments perspective, what I'm gonna be using, and again, you can modify these a little bit, but again, these should be good ones that you can use to synergize really well. I'm gonna be using Echo of Expulsion, Void Ability Final Blows cause targets to explode. So you'll notice in this build, there's gonna be a lot of synergy with Void, and because Bungie has changed the meta to allow you to really to go deep into having a monochromatic build, I'm gonna go really hard into it. So again, my void ability blows are going to explode targets. There's gonna be a lot of explosions with this build. I'm gonna use Echo of Cessation. Finisher final blows create a burst of void damage that causes nearby combatants to become volatile. And of course, volatile is important because when you kill volatile targets, they explode. Notice a the theme here. Also, defeating volatile targets, and I'm going to be making a lot of my targets volatile, are going to create a Void Breach. Void Breaches are the new things that we have in Destiny 2 that are related similar to the Elemental Wells. In this case, it gives you class energy when you pick them up, and it also powers up some of your armor mods. Echo of Vigilance. Defeating a target while your shields are depleted grants you a temporary void overshield. So again, this is kind of a nice to have thing. When you see my build later, it's not gonna happen very often. But if I do get in a hairy situation and my shields are down, then in that case, I'll be able to get a, a temporary void overshield, which again, is just from defeating targets. And then finally, Echo of Starvation, picking up a void breach or an orb of power, either one, grants Devour. If you're not familiar with Devour, Devour basically means that when you kill an enemy, you get your health all the way back. Not your overshield, but your health. The other thing that's nice about this is when you kill an enemy, you extend it. So it could be this thing that you have continuously going on. This is something that's really, again, you'll notice so far, a couple themes are, you'll notice there's a lot of stuff with turning things volatile, a lot of things exploding, and a lot of ability to survive and get your abilities back. Whether it's, you know, getting devour, being able to get your health back, or being able to get a temporary overshield. Again, lots of things that'll help you survive and blow up your enemies, which is what you want to do in Destiny 2, right? Now with this, you probably already guessed what the exotic is that de delves deeply into this, but let me let me talk about what I'm gonna be using. And it's Grill Falcon's Hauberk, which I'm probably butchering, but that's the exotic I'll be using. So your void weapons gain volatile rounds just by being void. After you emerge from being invisible. So again, one of the keys here is that with this build, I'm gonna become invisible quite a bit. And again, we'll talk about that here in a second, how everything works together. But because of that, I'll have volatile rounds a lot. 
When you're invisible and defeated combat while using finisher, all of your weapons gain bonus damage. You and your nearby allies gain a reserve over shield and improve class ability regeneration. So you notice I also had a fragment that when I when I did a finisher would also turn things volatile and do avoid explosion. So again, if I'm if I'm invisible, coming out of invisibility, I'm in a bad spot, I can finish something, get a lot of benefit out of it. Those reserve overshields that we're talking about here can be deployed by using a class ability. And again, that goes to your entire fire team. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So then let's talk about some of the seasonal mods that go into this. And then finally, I'll get into my armor. One of the key things about seasonal mods this year is that they make passive abilities. So you can only have 12 of them unlocked. But as you do that, you don't have to take up a spot on your armor to have these used. You basically just have to have them unlocked and then you get those abilities. So I'll go over some of the key ones. Authorized mods void. The armor energy costs of all of your armor mods affecting your void weapons are significantly discount. This build is going to really lean into void a lot. So again, that will help me be able to fit more mods and to get more things on my build. Shatter orbs. The first time you break a combatant shield, you create an orb of power. If you break this shield with a matching damage type. So if you would, because I'm using a lot of void, if you run into enemies that have void, you automatically just get a free orb. Now again, this isn't game breaking and you have to be facing stuff that have void shields, but again, it's a nice to have. This is one of the really key mods in the build. Volatile flow, picking up orbs of power, grants your void weapons volatile rounds. You'll notice earlier, I was talking about a ton of fragments, a ton of abilities around volatile. Well, this one, all I have to do is create and get an orb of power. And you'll you'll see when I spec out the final parts of the build, I'm going to get a ton of orbs of power, which will allow me to constantly be volatile. Bricks from beyond. This is a really cool one. Defeating a powerful combatant with a void weapon has a chance to generate heavy ammo for you and your f teammates. If you go heavy in the void, you're going to get a ton of ammo. And, and I've done this like within the legendary campaign and other activities, and I do get a ton of ammo. In fact, I've even used this in Gambit and other activities. And oddly enough, I'm getting ammo in those activities where I shouldn't be as well. Void weapon channeling. You gain a temporary bonus to void weapon damage after you defeat a target with a void damage weapon while at least one of your void abilities is fully charged. The damage bonus increased based on the number of fully charged void abilities you have. So if you have your super, if you have your dodge, if you have your smoke and your grenade all charged up, you're gonna do extra bonus with your void weapons. So then let's talk about my armor loadout. So on my helmet, I'm gonna have heavy ammo finder so I can get a lot of ammo just like I'm doing with my other abilities. Also, I have void strand dual siphon. I didn't mention that up in the seasonal uh, mods. I did do that. You don't have to do that. You can just use void siphon and it'll work just fine. Because again, with my void weapons, I wanna constantly creating orbs. Next on my arms, I'm gonna do grenade kickstarter. So first off, obviously this is an armor mod that now with the new system, when you pick up orb power, you're immediately going to get up to three armor charges that basically go away over 10 seconds. So as long as you're picking up orbs, you're gonna to continue to get armor charges, which you use in other parts of the build. But specifically the grenade Kickstarter is going to be when you throw out your grenade, you immediately get a lot of your grenade energy back. And I found in most testing, it's about half, which then you can use your other abilities to kind of get your grenade quicker. Emergency reinforcement for this one, this one's a new one where when your shields become broken, again, this one you have armor charges, you gain temporary damage reduction. So you notice earlier I had another fragment that allowed me when my shield was down, right, that I that I have other things that will help me with healing. So this is the same thing. If I get into if I'm getting, you know, kind of damaged or things like that, I can get additional damage reduction. And then font of endurance. Font of endurance, basically when I have an armor charge, I have increased resilience. So that will allow me you know, to maybe not have my resilience quite as high so I can balance out things on my build. On my legs, I'm gonna have Void Weapon Surge, and I'm gonna have two of those. This is the new mod that while you have Armor Charge, you do bonus damage with Void. In this case, my weapons I'm gonna be doing most of my damage with are gonna be Void, and so with two of those, with one, it's 10% increase, with two, it's 17, and with three, it's 22. Um, just to make it easy, I'm just gonna go, without having to put things all over in all my mod slots, I'm just gonna go for the two, and it gives me a nice bump to my weapon damage. Again, for all the void weapons that I'm using. Finally, on my class item, I'm gonna have double time dilation, which allows my armor charges that I have to, instead of lasting 10 seconds, to last 18. And this is really key. I'm gonna be generating a ton of orbs with this build, so and breaches, so I'm constantly gonna be getting these. But if I go in a period where Let's say I have to. I, I'm in some hairy situation where I can't get out. And I'm hiding. If I just went with you know no time with just no time dilation, I'd have 30 seconds of armor charge. With this, I'm going to have almost a minute. 
So that's almost double of time that I'm gonna have armor charge. So I think this is a really key thing too. Now for weapons, there are a ton of choices. And again, as long as they're void, you can do pretty much everything. And I thought about things like collective obligation and things like that. But honestly, one of the oldies but goodies is gonna be, and again, if you don't have this, you can obviously get this weapon. It's not too terribly hard to get. But this is a must have, I think anyway, for GMs and things like that, and that's Lamonarch. Now, why is Lamonarch so overpowered in this build? Well, one of the keys of Lamonarch, especially if you have the Catalyst, and the reason for that was with, with the Catalyst, so first off, let's go over what Lamonarch does. Lamonarch, when you pull the bow all the way back and release it, is gonna release an area that also spreads poison, void poison over a period of area, which any of the effects that happen from that, that void attack happen over that wide area. So again, you'll see where I'm going with with this. The other thing that's going to do is that with the catalyst, not only does it do all of that goodness, but rapid kills will trigger health regeneration. And you're gonna be doing a lot of rapid kills, especially against red bars. And powerful enemies counting as more than one kill. Now, the monarch is something that you have people who love it, love it or hate it. In PVE, especially with this void thing, it's gonna work great because what's gonna happen is, and you'll see in some of this footage that I'm gonna show you, you can actually use some all of your abilities at long range potentially. So let's say you have some stuff further on and, you, and you're in a bad situation. You just wanna do a quick long arrow out to those enemies and spread the void over a period of time. Well, when those enemies die, it's going to count as multi-kills to get you orbs. It's also going to allow you, that's gonna spread volatile out. And also any other void effects that you have, that you have normally on a weapon, whether it's damage or anything else, are gonna have over that period of time. So one of the great things I love to do about this again, is I will put it out there. And while I'm doing other things, the damage that's happening over time will actually make me invisible from some from the effects of some of the other mods that I talked about. So again, it's almost like a fire and forget weapon, but it also, again, allows you not only to do a ton of damage to get volatile rounds to blow a bunch of stuff up and to generate orbs, but you're also constantly going to be going invisible because when you kill things that are volatile, okay, when you kill enemies, you immediately go invisible and you're also going to get devour and you're going to do all those other great things. So again, this setup right there is one of the ultimate things to allow you to control the battlefield, right? To basically have everything explode and to keep you out of danger. The other thing is as you're invisible, you'll have all the great effects that you have from Grafalcons, which is just going to allow you to extend that volatile out. And again, you can do a finisher and you can get over shields to your uh, teammates. So again, lots of just great synergy where you'll be able to control the battlefield, go invisible, stay alive. And then with the void surges, you're going to do a ton of extra damage. So things that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to damage, especially if you're in a low light situation where you're like negative five or negative 15, that ability to have plus 17 is going to basically get you back to parity and allow you to treat this content from a damage perspective. Like if you're at level, obviously in contest mode, you're still be a little bit lower, but it's going to get you in the right direction. Now, as far as DPS, obviously DPS is going to be the best option with this particular setup. However, there are a couple options I would look at. If you're running Le Monarch, then another thing I would look at if you have it is retrofit escapade. And if you have the pattern, I would go ahead and craft that and get enhanced fourth times the charm and target lock. Target lock does with the enhanced version up to 45% extra damage on top of all the other damage bonuses you already have in this build. So again, that does require you to keep your, you know, on the target, but if you're running divinity or something like that, that's gonna be super easy. The other thing is when you have your tether, you're gonna have debuffs that you can do as well, right? Which is gonna additionally help you with damage. And then retrofit, one of the other things that's nice about it is that it's so fast that you can also use an ad clear if you want to. And since you have the dodge allows you to reload your weapons, if you're in a DPS phase, you can again, do all that damage. Again, fourth times the charge, it's also gonna continuously feed bullets. So you'll be able to do damage for a long time. And then you could put backup magazine or things like that on it. But then you do your dodge and you'll be able to get your, your basically the ability to start doing damage again. And with most damage in most raid boss encounters, that's going to give you damage for a long time before you have to reload. Another option I've been looking at is the new void uh, exotic that I just got that has some great synergy of a build like this. I love using the Monarch because heavy ammo is a little bit more difficult to come by. And obviously primary with the Monarch is not. So again, that's something I probably will play with. But again, if you use that, then you're gonna lose some of the synergy you have with the Monarch. But again, play around with it, figure out what will be the optimal things for your fire team. But again, that's the power fantasy guys. 
It's all about the ability to create constant orbs, to constantly be able to go invisible, to regenerate your health, to have devour, to do extra void damage, and then to be able to do some really great burst DPS damage when you need to. Honestly, I was a little surprised. I've been using my Arc Hunter a lot lately, and obviously there have been some changes to some of the aspects and fragments with that particular build, so I was looking for something new. With all of these seasonal mods that allow you to go really deeply into generating extra ammo, extra damage, all sorts of extra, you know, and just reducing the cost of the mods that are void, it just seems like a no-brainer to lead heavily in the void and use that for any of the end game content that you're trying to get through. That's the video, guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.